Ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker, Tom Schreider, better known as Big Al, is a very busy man and very well qualified to speak to you today. He runs recruiting workshops, hosts seminars on alternative marketing strategies, publishes an instructional marketing newsletter for MLM leaders, and is a keynote speaker at conventions in many countries. Please join me in welcoming to stage Tom Schreider. Y'all have a pencil and paper? When you get home, you're going to have a whole bunch of distributors who are not nearly as excited and as hardworking as you are. Is that true? They say, you went to a convention and you sat there the whole time, you know, and couldn't you just tell me the highlights in the next 30 seconds before my TV show comes on? (laughs) So if we're going to be a good leader, we're going to have to make things short and simple for them. So here's the number one question I get all the time. They say, well, how do you become successful, you know, like Graham or somebody like that? And I say, all leaders, the very top, have three things in common what they've done. The problem is when you get started, when you're talking to a distributor, you don't know how to do two of them. And they say, really? I said, so uh, would you like to find out what they are? And they have a decision to make. Some say, no, my show comes on. And the other ones say, yeah, 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 I want to learn how. So I tell them, number one, they've all made a decision. So I tell them, write down decision. I say, unfortunately, you don't know how to make one. They say, really? And I says, yeah, you don't know how to make one. All your decisions are made for you. You're told where to stop on the road with the stop sign. You're told what cubicle you can sit in, how many weeks you get for a holiday, what kind of car you can drive based upon your income. You've never had to make a decision, so don't worry about it. You don't even know how to do it. So when you get started here, you thought you made a decision, but you probably said something like this, well, I'll try. (laughs) What does it mean when they try? It means it may or may not happen, but probably may not. So if somebody says, I'm going to try to come to your meeting tonight, what does that mean? (laughs) Only if the earth tilts and they slide in. That's the only chance they have. Or they say things, oh, I'll do my best, which means they'll work for a while till humanity crushes them. Or I have a vision, or I have a goal, I have dreams. All these are not decisions because they're spelled differently. (laughs) A decision says I'm going to do it, period. It's like the people that burn their ships when they land on shore, they can't go back. There's no turning back, which means if there's a problem, you're going to figure out how to solve the problem, go around it, go over it, go under it. It's a decision. Now, hopefully everybody here learns this, or probably has the skills of how to make a decision. You're here today, correct? But the people at home don't know how to make a decision. They're going to say, I'll try. I hope it works for me. I hope the company is really successful for me, lets me know how I did. Yeah, they're not going to make very good in their business unless they make a decision. Number two, number two is the one that they know how to do, and that is collect information. Now, collecting information is the least important, but it is important, because if you don't collect the information, you're going to look pretty stupid when you don't know the name of your company. You don't know what the products are. You don't know how much they cost. You don't know how the compensation plan works. So how many people here would agree that your company does a pretty good job of giving you the information you need? You have DVDs, CDs, brochures, uh, websites, trainings, conventions. Yeah, so the information is there for them, and they know how to sit and write down information because they went to school. So that's the only one they really got. And they say, well, what's the third thing? I say, well, the third thing is the skills to pull it off. You see, you can have information inside your head, but when you try to transfer it to somebody else, which is our job, it bounces off their forehead. It falls on the floor. It doesn't go inside. I mean, it can't go past their 
dysfunctional programming, their bad experiences, their prejudices, the too good to be true, or trying to make money off of me, or uh, what's the catch, or their salesman alarm, whoop, 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 dive, Scotty, dive, shields up, salesman approaching, run, run, save yourself, hide your wallet, hide your purse, you, you know what happens. So all their good information comes up, bounces off, and tingle, 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 tingle on the floor. So unless they have the skills of manipulating their information past all of that negativity and the programs and prejudices, it's not going to go inside. And it's pretty easy to see how pathetic they are, isn't it? That they don't have the skills. Now, nobody taught them these skills in schools. We have to. Because schools didn't teach it. It's not their fault. So I point out to them how bad they are at transferring the information. Now, how many people here have some pretty good things to say about your business? but people don't believe them. All right. so, so we don't need more good things to say. We need to learn how to get people to believe the good things we're saying already. So here's the demo I do. How many people here, when you're out talking to people, to the prospects you're talking to, do they want to live longer or die quickly? <laughs> Think about this. Live longer. OK, so most of the people you talk to want to live longer. Excellent. One person. Right. And when you're out there talking to prospects, do they want more money in their life or less money? More. All right. So your prospect wanted to live longer, wants more money. You offer them a chance to live longer. You offer them more money. And at the end of the presentation, they say, no. <laughs> Let me review. They want to live longer, you give them a chance to live longer. They want more money, you give them a chance to have more money, and they say no. Does that strike anybody here as strange? Yeah. We have taken a pre-sold prospect, and through our random use of untrained words, we literally talk them out of it. That's pretty direct, isn't it? It gets worse. We talked them out of it so badly that they almost say to us, I'd rather die quickly and be broke rather than do business with you. <laughs> so we have to stop talking people out of it by learning the skills. And step three, as a lot of you know, have been to the workshops I've done here in Australia, there's 25 basic skills. We learn these things, and then we know how to talk to people, and they see what we see. And if they see what we see, they're going to make the same decision. That's the problem. So your new person doesn't know how to make a decision. They do collect the information, but they have no skills of how to get it inside of somebody's head. And that's like buying a Ferrari and never taking a driving lesson. It's not going to get any better, is it, until they learn how to deliver that information. So what we're going to do is show you a really quick way of doing it today so you can appear to be a leader with superpowers, high-tech levitating skills, ninja mind meld capabilities. You're going to impress your downline in about 10 seconds with the use of about 13 basic words. Now, how many people here have ever been to one of the sessions I did before? So, so you know the power of basic words. The folks that don't, let me give you an example. By changing around a few basic words, and that's the skills we need to learn, everything changes instantly. For example, young man says to a young lady, when I look in your eyes, time stands still. <laughs> or he could say, your face would stop a clock. <laughs> now, It's the same message, <laughs> but by changing a few words around, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Is that the difference? How many people here are sick and tired of talking to people that don't get it? What a waste of two people's times. We're using up valuable oxygen. We need to get the message inside their head, pass all that negativity and programming, use our special high-level tech skills to get it inside their head. Because once it's inside, they can make a decision if it's going to serve them or not. So how do we get it inside their head so they get it? All right, let's try this. Do you all have a pencil and paper? I'd like you to write down four things. Number one, write down closing. 
we have to close because if we don't close, we don't get paid. Is that true? Number two, write down rapport, R-A-P-P-O-R-T. If we don't have rapport with people, they're not going to trust us. Do people buy from people they don't trust? No. So um, we have to create rapport, right? Uh, number three, write down presentation. We have to give them the information, right? You know, how things work, you know, products, comp plans, stuff like that. Number four, write down icebreaker. This is where we introduce our business into a social conversation. You know, like, hi, how are you? How's the weather? Want to be a distributor? <laughs> All right? We'll do it with a little bit more finesse. So we, do we understand these four elements? If you were to take the 25 skills, all we're doing is breaking it down for these four elements to occur. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Write down these four things again, but put them in chronological order. What you would do first, what you do second, what you would do third, what you do fourth. Have you all rewritten them? Now lean over and look at the person next to you and see if their list matches yours. All right. How many people here had a list that didn't match your neighbors? Oh, wait a minute here. If your list didn't match your neighbors, we're in the same business, aren't we? Something here is seriously wrong. So how many people here would like to start learning the skills so you can get your message inside their head right away and impress your downline so they say, what a great levitating leader you are? <laughs> All right, so number one, we got to build rapport. If they don't trust you, you're out of luck. I have BMWs at the end of the street, half price. I don't know about that, right? Even if it's a good deal, if they don't trust you, you are toast. How many people here realize that unless you can establish instant rapport and trust, it's over? Now, you can, um, how long does it take for people to decide to trust you? A few seconds, right? So if you took the formula like Form, talk about their family for an hour. <laughs> Occupation for another hour. You know, kind of build that rapport thing. Our, you know. Yeah, it's not going to work, is it? All right. So we're going to be professionals. We're not some amateur hack out here. We're going to build instant and immediate rapport. Let me give you a couple ways of doing it. Number one. If you tell somebody a fact that they already believe, they think, you're a genius. You think just like I do. We see the world from the same viewpoint. And if we see the world from the same viewpoint, we're going to make the same decision. And that's why a member of the Liberal Party speaks. And if you're a member of the Liberal Party, you say, yeah, we think the same. But if you're a member of the Labor Party, what are you thinking? From the moment they move their lips. They're lying. <laughs> it's not true. So one of the things people look for is, do you see the world the same way they do? Now, if you're going to build trust and rapport, let me tell you some things that don't work. Number one, being honest. <laughs> Number two, having integrity. Number three, having their best interests at heart. Number four, being sincere. Those things do not build trust. They're good things to do. I'm not saying be dishonest, but they don't build trust. And if you don't believe me, how many people here have been honest with your prospects, had a high integrity, had their best interest at heart, were sincere, and they didn't believe you? So stop. It's not working. <laughs> and let me prove to you that that's not how the human mind works. The human mind looks for specific things to create trust. Now, in Australia, do you have con men? 
you know what con men are here, right? You guys kind of invented it. All right. Uh, <laughs> but we have con men in America, too. We call them politicians. Now, <laughs> let me tell you about con men. Are they honest? People of high integrity? I don't think so. Do they have people's best interests at heart? No. Are they sincere? You've got to be kidding. Yet, they are able to get honest, hardworking people to trust them and to give up their hard-earned money in seconds. So wouldn't it occur to us that they're using specific skills to get their message inside of other people's heads where they trust them? So could we learn those skills too? Yeah. Now, these skills could be used for good or evil. What are we going to use them for? Yeah, a little of both. All right, now... Let's go to work. What the human mind looks for is, do you see the world the same way I do? If you see the world the same way I do, I can trust you. So if you're in Russia right now and you're a million Russians standing around you and you meet somebody from Australia, hey, I can trust you. We're buds. Because they are more like you than not like you. And that's why we like people of the same religion, the same race, the same brand of beer, the same sports team, the same politics. We like people who are more like us than dislike us. Now, when I got started in networking 40 <clears throat> years ago, uh, I pointed out our differences. That was stupid. I would say, you got a stupid job, I got this great opportunity, let's talk. <laughs> that didn't work very good. So you have to tell them a fact that they absolutely positively believe, and they say, you see the world the same way I do, I can start trusting what you say. So could you think of a fact in the known universe that they would believe? All right, how about, um, you could say, you know, jobs interfere with our week. What are they thinking? Yeah. <laughs> or commuting's really, really hard. Yeah. Or Australia's climate's hard on women's skin. Or we'd all like to feel younger. Got that right. How are we doing? It's not hard to create instant rapport by just telling them one simple fact, and they say, wow, you think the same way I do? You must be a genius just like me. <laughs> High-level Vulcan mind mail. We're in the same wavelength. You're awesome. Are you all ready? Turn to your partner right now and tell your partner one fact that you think your partner might absolutely positively believe. And it could be something as simple as, you know, sitting on our butt all day is sure is hard or something like that, right? Everybody ready? Grab your partner and tell them a fact. Uh, well, did that work for everybody? We all like to spend more time with our children. We all need more money. We all want more holiday time. Two paychecks are better than one. Shoe shopping is fun. You know, whatever it may be. The very first thing to do to establish trust could be to tell them a simple fact. Now, there's other ways of doing it. Another way is children, let's say two months, three months, four months old, how do they know who to trust? When somebody smiles at them, what do they do? Smile back. One of the easiest ways to create trust is, is to smile. So let's try this. If you were to smile to somebody, your chances go way up. But if you frown, they go way down. Now, we're going to do a little experiment here. How many people, number one here, can smile? <laughs> All right? About 20 people. Interesting. Now, <laughs> here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to turn to your partner, give them the biggest, broadest Cheshire grin you can, smile as hard as you can, and see what happens. Are you all ready? Turn to your partner and smile. <laughs> I 
All right, was that easy? Some of you need practice, I see. Now, knowing specific word sequences, of which there's hundreds of them to create instant trust, would be an important skill to have, right? But we're going to learn one right now. What we want to do is leave here today as a leader in total action, impressing people with what they could do right away. So let's try this. How many people here have ever seen a stranger? <laughs> and that stranger looks pretty good for your business. You say, oh, I'd like to approach that stranger, but I don't know that stranger. I've never seen this stranger before. We have nothing in common. I just can't walk up and say, hey, nice weather. I want to be a distributor. It's just not <laughs> right. Plus, I don't want to get rejected, and I don't want to be rejected in front of my downline who's with me, who I'm trying to impress as a leader. So what we have to do is go up and talk to specific programs in their subconscious mind that will trigger them to say, I will instantly trust you. We're bond at the hip, Vulcan mind mill, blood brother, blood sister. I'll open up my heart and tell you anything you want. This is what we have to do, right? And our skills, step number three, is learning how to do this. Now, there, as most of the leaders here know, there is a four-word sequence that we say that will instantly bond at the hip, open up their mind, Vulcan mind melt, so we could talk to any stranger we ever wanted to at a very high level of trust and friendliness. How cool would that be? Now, as a leader here, what is your obligation to your downline? All right. Did they learn any of these skills of how to get their information inside their head, inside of other people's heads in school? No, they learned, I don't know, geography or something like that. So it's not their fault they don't know. But who is responsible for giving them their skills if they choose this profession? You are. Every profession has skills, right? Engineers have skills, accountants have skills. I was an engineer. I decided to change profession, so I had to learn a new set of skills in networking. Does that make sense? Unfortunately, I didn't do that. I used my engineering skills. How do you think that went? You all know engineers, right? We should not be let out in public. So engineers are basically boring people, personality free, charisma bypass, socially challenged. Uh, we have to learn a brand new set of skills. And if you're sitting here today, and if you've chosen this as your profession, you will have to learn a new set of skills, right? So that's what we're writing down right now. So let's go to work. You're going to have to give your brand new distributor some answers. So if your brand new distributor came up to you and said, hey, sponsor, you promised to help me. So uh, please tell me the four words I need to say, you know, just to get my business started, so people will bond with me, trust me right away, have instant rapport, so I won't get rejected. I even talk to strangers. Please tell me the exact four words to say so I can do my job. What would we tell them? Would we look them in the eye and say, I never did like you, I'm not telling you? <laughs> or would we look them in the eye and say, well, you know, I'm going to replace you in six months anyway, no big deal. Or we could look him in the eye and say, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't bother to learn the skills. You know, if you find out, let me know. Or we could suck it up and say, let me tell you exactly the four words you need to say to create that instant and immediate bond so it's all downhill from there, right? We have that choice. What choice do you think we're going to give to our distributors? To give them the skills, step three, they need to pull it off or just withhold it from them? So let's just try this. Everybody grab somebody next to you and ask the person next to you, please give me the exact four words. And don't take any lip from them. Don't take, ooh, blah, 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 blah. Just tell them, give me the four words. Everybody ready? Ask your partner for the four words. Let's begin. All right, how'd that go? How many people had a little bit of fun? How many people here would like to know a better set of four words? How many people here would just rather have a better partner? <laughs> All right. So I'm just curious, if you knew these four words, would you use them over and over again to build your business? 
And I'm just curious, if I told you these four words, would you use it to approach even the coldest, meanest stranger to melt their heart and maybe give them an opportunity? And I'm just curious, if you withheld these four words from your downline, what would they think of you? Ooh. So I'm just curious, how many people here would like to know these four words? I'm just curious, how many people here are ready to write them down? I'm just curious, how many more times do I have to say, I'm just curious, before you write down, I am just curious. Now, as the leaders here know, our job is to talk directly to the programs of the subconscious mind. That's where the decisions are made. And when you say, I am just curious, it disables certain programs that opens up their heart, Vulcan mind mill, joint the hip, blood brother, blood sister, instantly you're in conversation at a very high level of trust. I'm just curious, how many people here would like to have an example? <laughs> All right, that was too easy. So uh, you walk out the door here and see the security guard, you might say something like, um, I'm just curious, do you enjoy working weekends? <laughs> I'm just curious, can you pick the days you want? I'm just curious, can you pick the hours you want to work? I'm just curious, was this the career you wanted in high school? I'm just curious, is this a pretty good paying job? I'm just curious, you ever thought about being your own boss? I'm just curious, would you like to have more time with your family? I'm just, how are we doing? How many people here think that you could start a conversation with the security, not, not all 600 people do this. Now, uh, <laughs> but how many people here think you could start a conversation with the coldest person out there you have nothing in common with by starting off with, I am just curious. On the way home, stop for petrol, say to the person in the petrol station, I'm just curious, do you enjoy being target practice for criminals? <laughs> or, uh, I'm just curious, do you enjoy working hard so your boss has a big house for his retirement? I'm, how are we doing? So turn to your partner right now and let's give this a try and just start off with an I am just curious and ask him a question and see how good it feels inside. Everybody ready? Grab your partner, let's begin. All right, how are we rocking? So I'm just curious, how many people here heard a pretty good I'm just curious? Who would like to shout one out here? Okay, who has a really good I'm just curious you'd like to share with the group? Uh, one, yes, go ahead. Is what? I'm just curious, would you like to work from Vegas? Now, I'm missing something here, but I'm thinking, tell me more, all right? <laughs> Let's give her a hand for volunteering, excellent. Hey, that was pretty good. Uh, tell you what, we're gonna give you, uh, since you volunteered, that was brave. Uh, we're gonna give you a set of CDs by my favorite speaker of all time, me, yeah, all right? <laughs> so uh, pass this on down to her, it's a set of two CDs on the secret languages of prospects. Let's give her a huge hand for volunteering. Who else has one? Yes, I'm just curious what? I'm just curious if you want to earn more money. Let's give her a hand for volunteering. Excellent. Hey. How about a couple CDs on how to talk to people over on the phone? Let's give her a hand. That was really brave. Who else has one? Yes, sir. I'm just curious. Would you like to look younger? I'm just curious. Would you like to look younger? Now, you have to be careful. If you talk to somebody 17 or 18. <laughs> but what do you think most people are going to say? Yeah, tell me more. And you're instantly in a high level of trust conversation, no rejection. That was great. Since that was great, sir, we're gonna give you something special. There's a six CD album by my third favorite speaker of all time, me. And as high as from super sponsoring workshops, let's give him the six CD album. That's a great job there. Now, let's move on. Here's the next step. See, bribery works, doesn't it? Now, here's the next step. Icebreaker. So remember those four things? The first thing was rapport. The next thing is icebreaker. Now the icebreaker is where you introduce your business into the conversation. 
I'll give you a simple icebreaker that you can use because we don't have time to learn that skill today, but a simple one was all you need to use to go home and impress your prospects. Now, in the icebreaker, do you like talking to people and nobody's home? <laughs> They're not listening. So you and I know that the first thing we want to do is to freeze their brain, bring it to a complete stop, make them forget whatever they're thinking about, totally focus on what we're about to say next, like a puppy dog on a screen door, totally control their mind with iron grip control. Now, if that bothers you, let me point out, they're not using their mind and we can do a better job. Now, <laughs> unless you bring it to a halt, they're not listening to the good things you say. And you can take control of another person's mind with nine word sequences, five word sequences, two word sequences, four word sequences, you know, very easy. How many people here believe it's possible to free somebody's mind, bring it to a complete stop, make them forget whatever they're thinking about, totally focus on what you're about to say next with just four words? Ah, my influence is underwhelming. Okay, so. <laughs> but, but unless we do this, we're talking and nobody's home. We have to freeze their mind. Now, I just found out I just found out, that'd be roughly how many words in Australia? Four, all right. Now, when you say I just found out, it freezes the survival program in their mind, it freezes the uh, curiosity program, what'd you find out, it might be important for me, blah, blah. It, it does a lot of cool things. Just say it. It works even if you don't even know how it works. So, would you like some examples of what we're gonna do with our icebreaker? We're going to make them beg us for a presentation. Now, I have this basic rule. I will never give a presentation about product or opportunity unless somebody begs me for it first for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm a coward. Number two, I hate rejection. It goes on and on. But people say, well, you're going to starve. No, no, no. I'm going to learn the skills of how to get people to beg. So tell me the next word that pops into their mind when you say, I just found out how we can get an extra paycheck every month. Asking you for a presentation with no rejection. I just found out how we can fire the boss. Asking you for a presentation with no rejection. I just found out how we can stay home with our children and get a full-time paycheck. I just found out how we can retire five years early at full pay. I just found out how we don't have to work 45 years like our parents. I just found out how we can work three weeks out of the month but get paid for four. I just found out how we can take a one-week holiday every month. I just found out how we can work from Vegas. I just found out how we can take a six-month holiday twice a year. I just found out Australians are slow at math. All right, so. I just found out how we can make more money part-time than our husband does full-time. I just found out how we can wake up every morning feeling like a million dollars. I just follow found out how we can fall asleep at night within seven minutes of our head touching the pillow. I just found out how we can feel like we're 16 years old all over again, but with better judgment. I just found out how we can iron away our wrinkles. I just found, oh, I just found out how we can make our skin younger while we sleep. How are we doing? And what's the next word from them every time? How tell me more. So the second step in our formula is Icebreaker, basic person-to-person -person conversation. So are you all ready? Turn to your partner and tell them I'm really good. I just found out. Let's begin. Okay, are we rocking? 
Now, who heard a really good I just found out? Seems like this side of the room is so much smarter. I just found that out. So uh, what do we have over here? Uh, uh, yes, go ahead. I just found out. I just found out I can have more energy every day. What do you think the next word from the prospect is? How? Almost every time. And just by using that little bit and teaching that to your brand new distributor, will they be more effective? Because they have no idea of the skills they need to talk to people. But if they just went around and said, I just found out how I can have more energy every day, most people are going to say, how? No rejection. And you're already talking about your business. You've moved it from a personal conversation to a business conversation. That was really good. We're going to give you an eight CD album by my 14th favorite speaker of all time, me. It's uh, called uh, Big Al's uh, MLM Sponsoring Secrets. Let's give her a huge hand. Excellent. Lots of skills here. All right. Does this side, I just found out this side of the room is really slow. All right. So uh, right there, go ahead. I just found out how we can make more money part-time than we used to full-time. Now, what do you think a lot of people would say to that? How? Asking, begging you for a presentation. We're going to give you a four-CD album from a Live in London series all about recruiting. Let's give her a huge hand for volunteering. Excellent. How are we rocking now? Are we ready for number three? Remembering those four things? Number three is closing. Mumble, 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 mumble. All right. Now, the folks in Perth know this because we were there, what, two weeks ago and they explained how this works when we taught the closing skills. But for those that weren't in Perth or weren't at Graham's when we were there in January, closing comes before the presentation. We're going to close the prospect first and the presentation will support their decision or be their first training session. You and I will never, ever give a presentation again unless they've already made the mental choice I want to join. You're, you're, you're looking at me like I'm from another country. Now, <laughs> the human mind, which is what we're, we have to deal with, right? How many people here realize that you will have to learn the basic skills of how the human mind works? Your job is to get a decision. If you have no idea how it works, now would be a good time to start, since you're going to do it for a living, right? At a high level and make super money. And how many people here think that you're not going to make super money if you just keep oral diarrhea on people with lots of information and not knowing what's going on? So what we have to do is close first. Let me show you how the human mind works. How many people here ever received a telephone call from a salesman? Uh, how many seconds into the conversation did it take you to make up your mind? All right. In 10 seconds' time, you've already made up your decision. That, what was your decision? No. Before the salesman's presentation. Is that true? So if you make your final decision before the information, before the presentation, that's what you do to salespeople. Do you think other people would do that to you? What percentage of the time? About 100%. Your prospects made up their mind before they even showed up to the meeting. Before they ever met you for coffee, they already made up their mind based upon the words we used. Now, that's why we can't use random, made up, stupid, untrained words. We have to be very careful in the beginning because that's where it all happens. Let's try this. How many people here have ever watched videos on YouTube? How long does it take you watching a video before you make a decision if you want to see it or not? A few seconds? So you make the decision before the information presentation. Is that true? Hmm. How many people here have ever seen a man surf channels? <laughs> have you? How long does it take them to make a decision if they want to watch that or not? Before they see what's, even what's on the channel, right? Are we getting, when does the decision happen? When does the closing happen? Before the presentation. How many people have ever ate at a restaurant? You make a decision to go in the restaurant before you even see the menu many times. So you make the decision before the information. And when you order off the menu, you order before you have all the 
information. You say, well, were the vegetables organic? Did the chicken lead a happy life before they killed it? <laughs> right. We make the decision first. How many people here would agree that the human mind makes the decision first based upon zero information? It's just the way it is. You see, the company doesn't need you to lip sync information and read flip charts to them like they're reading impaired. They need you to get people to make decisions, right? To buy or join. So that's when the closing happens. Now, people will make decisions if they're not making it on information. How many people here have an idea that it must be making it on something else? And what they make it on is pre existing programs in their mind. I'll show you how that would work. I'm a son of a gypsy, 17 years old, pickpocket. I've lied and thieved all my life. I see a wallet on the floor. I make an instant and immediate decision. Who does that wallet belong to? Me. Based upon the programs I have up until this moment in my life. I'm a son of a Sunday school minister teacher. 17 years old. I see the same wallet. I make an instant and immediate decision. Who does that wallet belong to? Somebody else, based upon the programs I received up until this moment in my life. So it's important what we teach our children because they will create programs that will make instant decisions. So when you talk to people, it's not the information of how many layers deep the mitocardia stabs the enzymes or anything. No, it's, no. <laughs> it's not the information they make the decision upon. They make a decision based upon programs in their mind, and then our information supports that decision. So I'm not saying anything bad about the information, but don't use information to get a decision. So you need to be familiar, if you're learning the skills of this business, of what programs people use to make decisions, right? Let me show you how some programs are in your head. Some of you don't know, I recently graduated as a chiropractor. I've learned a brand new technique on how to twist your head. <coughs> Who wants to be first? <laughs> now, you've already made a final decision based upon a program called survival, haven't you? <laughs> and you made that decision before you heard that I graduated bottom of my class. 30% of the people can recover. I saw it on the internet. <laughs> program is made on. The program and the decision, right? How many of you have children? Oh, all right. Is it okay if I take them skydiving with me? <laughs> all right. Now, depending on what they did to you growing up, you've already made an instant decision. Oh, no, my babies can't jump or I would help push. <laughs> right? But you made the decision before the information presentation, which is I'm a certified skydiver. I'm successful three out of four times. We're only diving one centimeter. We got this, right? We make our decisions on programs, not the information. The information supports it. What's the name of your uh, prime minister, the backstabber? What's her name? <laughs> Julia, all right. So, Julia, not, not this Saturday, but a week, what was that, what, 13 days from now, she's, she will be speaking at the United Nations. She's doing a speech on how she's going to get the United States, Western Europe, and Australia out of debt once and for all. Now, depending on your political affiliation, you've already made an instant decision. It's going to be the greatest speech ever in the history of human civilization, <laughs> or it's going to be a bunch of political gibberish like every prime minister before. But here's what's interesting. You've made your final decision, and she hasn't even started her speech for 13 more days. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, doesn't it make sense that closing comes number three? If that's when they make their decision, wouldn't that be a good time to close? Yeah. So what we have to do is talk to pre-existing programs in their mind. Now, how many people here do know how to talk directly to the subconscious mind? Okay, we got a problem. Since uh, that's our job, right? We have to talk to the programs of the subconscious mind. That's our job. We better start learning how. So let me give you a shortcut. Let me show you how quick that decision is. I'm going to give you five words. Listen to these five words. Tell me what decision your mind makes after these five words, yes or no. Are you ready? I'm a brand new distributor. I have all my inventory, my CDs, my DVDs, my flip chart, my convention tickets. And I go out. I'm ready to go. I got the information. I've made a decision to do it. How many skills do I have? 
So I start off my conversation with these five words. Would you be interested in... What's your decision? I'm dead meat roadkill at that moment. I'm talking to a human cadaver from there on. It's over. <laughs> and if I do this to 100 people, what's my results after 100 people? Because those five words activate the salesman alarm. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Dive, scuddy, dive. Shields up. Salesman approaching. Run, run. Save yourself. Hide your wallet. Hide your purse. Get a shoes together and run. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right. You see, we have to talk to the programs, right? That's our profession. Now, if you don't want to learn the skills of our profession, it's okay. Choose a different profession. You know, government work, taxi driving, skydiving, you know, whatever. But if you're going to do this, we better start learning how to talk to people quickly so we can start moving up the ranks quickly. How many people are tired of sitting where you are right now? It's a bad feeling to be left behind when other people are moving forward, so let's move forward quicker than them. So here's another five words. Because after being discouraged of a hundred no's in a row, I'm saying, oh, I got ripped off, bad opportunity. This ain't working for me, you know? But don't worry, I listen to a motivational CD. I can do it again. <laughs> so now I go out and I try these five words. I say, um, Let's say I'm your brother-in-law. I come up to you and I say, I just got involved with... This is starting to hurt, isn't it? Too close to home? How many people here feel the instant no decision? It's over. And that's why you and I cannot afford to use random, untrained words in the first few seconds when it all happens. It's a bad place to make stuff up, isn't it? Now, I can see you're pretty depressed because you can see how people got destroyed no matter how much they believed because they didn't have the skills to get the information over. And it's ugly, isn't it? No matter how hard they work, they're being crushed, 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 and they will never, ever move forward. So would it be okay if I gave you five words that worked? Yeah. And would it be okay if these five words got people to make an instant and immediate yes decision? And would it be okay if we use these five works to impress our downline? So would it be okay if we learn them now? Would it be okay if we write them down? Would it be okay if? Now there is a stupid program in most people's mind that says this. If anybody anywhere at any time ever says, would it be okay if? We're going for it. High five. We're there. We don't even know what it is, but we're doing it. Yes, yes, yes. What a stupid program. Are we going to take advantage of it? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're, th you're sitting here thinking right now. You, you, you're, you're saying, you're telling me that people will make an instant yes decision based upon five stupid words like that? Yeah. And it's almost impossible to believe. So would it be okay if I gave you some examples? All right. So let's try this. <laughs> Would it be okay if you had an extra paycheck every month? Would it be okay if your skin got younger while you sleep? Would it be okay if we can back up our body clocks to be younger? Would it be okay if we wake up every morning feeling like a million dollars? Would it be okay if we could just iron wrinkles away? Wouldn't it be okay if we never had to show up for work again? Would it be okay if we never had to commute again? Would it be okay if we take our children on a one-week holiday once every month? Would it be okay? How are we doing? It's a stupid, stupid program. But that's our job, to learn the skills of these programs. So we can talk to people, so we can get the good information inside their head. Now, once we have manipulated the good information past all that negativity and bad programming experiences and placed it in their mind, they can make a decision if it's going to serve them or not. So we have to have the skills of manipulating all the good stuff you've learned past all that garbage so they can see if it serves them or not. And I'll, I'll just give you a quick example. There's a lady, 77 years old, can't take her grandbabies to the park. Arthritis hurting her so bad. If you're able to manipulate past her mind that you had something that might help her body, right? It just might help her feel better. She can make a decision, I can take the grandbabies to the park, 
Or she could also make the decision, no, I don't want to take it because my children visit me more when I pretend to be sick. And I'm okay with either decision. But what I'm not okay with is not being able to get the information inside of her head where she believes it because that's withholding a choice from her. And we can't withhold choices from people for opportunity or product benefits. We have to get it inside their mind and then they can choose what they want that's gonna make them happy. Are we okay with that? So, I'd like you to write down 13 words. Number one, write down this. I am just curious. Number two, write down, I just found out. Number three, write down, would it be okay if? That's a total of 13 words, right? So, would you like to see where we're going? So, you're out there, you're the leader, your new distributor's looking up to you, they're expecting magic from you. They expect you to be able to take cold prospects and turn them into hungry people that want to do the business. They want you to have high level ninja mind reading skills. So you're out there talking to people and I'm out there talking to people. Now if I'm a brand new person, how many skills do I have? Now if I have no skills, if I've refused to learn the skills, let me go out and talk about oh, R square. So I come up to people and say, would you be interested in spending $100 on a chance that you might feel better because your mitochondria got detoxified and we got this special enzyme that gets the, um, you know, where some people have a better sense of well-being. Uh, our scientists can beat up their scientists. And we got a testimony I'd like to read to you now. And, you know, I'm really sincere and I'm a person of high integrity. And <laughs> Do we see the problem? If we take our engineering or our secretarial skills or our truck driving skills here into this business, it's going to be ugly. <laughs> but you... You have the same, uh, you, you do this party, right? you have R-square parties, that's what the deal is, right? Yeah. So you're sitting down and, and um, you might say something else. You might say something like, I'm just curious how many people here would like to feel a lot younger? Well, I just found out how we can do that by taking a product called R-square where you don't even have to go to the gym. Would it be okay if you tried it for a month and see what it did for you? Yeah. I should take a picture of your faces right now. <laughs> Some of you looking like me like, uh, wait a minute, we uh, created a rapport, we broke the ice, we closed, we're done, that's only about eight or nine seconds, what are we going to do with the rest of the day? Remember, you guys have to have these high-level ninja skills to impress your downline, right? You don't want to be out there with the oral diarrhea, throwing up on people with all the stupid information. You want to close them right away. So let me do this slower in case you didn't get it. I'm just curious, would you like to feel a lot younger? I just found out how we can do that by taking this product called R-Square. We don't even have to go to the gym. Would it be okay if you tried it for a month? or two to see what it do, does for you. This is not rocket surgery, is it? Done. And that's the essence. Now, you might want to throw in there a high or something like that, you know, in conversation, <laughs> but uh, that's the essence of what we're going to say. And you can say, well, gosh, I could use this everywhere. I, I could probably say, uh, I'm just curious, is this a good paying job? I just found out how we can start our own business safely on the side until it grows where we can be our own boss. Would it be okay if we got together and talked about over a cup of coffee with Graham? Or, I'm just curious, 
Would you like your skin to get younger while you sleep? Well, I just found out how if you use this special night cream, your skin gets so young after a few months you can't even buy alcohol. <laughs> so would it be okay if you tried it for two months and see what it does for you? You could use this anywhere for lunch. You could say, uh, you're sitting at lunch with somebody here, and you say, uh, I'm just curious, do you really enjoy being fat? <laughs> I just found out that dessert that you ordered is going to have a lot of calories. Would it be okay if I ate it for you? <laughs> In 13 words, you can have high-level ninja mind-reading skills Nobody will ever know what you did. So I'm just curious, how many people here would like to try it with your partner? Now, it doesn't have to be good. We're just going to try it one time to see if we get the hang of it, right? It doesn't have to be good because you can practice this during lunch, couldn't you? And get everybody's dessert. <laughs> so I'm just curious, how many people here are ready to give it a try? Because I just found out if we practice, it's going to be a whole lot better. So would it be okay if we do it right now? All right, so grab your partner and do these 13 words. Let's begin. Okay, how'd that go? All right, so um, right, come on up here. Everybody have a chance? We have a volunteer here, and go ahead so I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. I'm, I'm just curious, yes. I'm, I'm just curious. Would you like to feel 10 years younger? I just found out how to re-energize re yourself with this amazing natural product. Would it be okay if you tried it and experienced youth again? Let's give her a huge hand. Don't go away. Don't wait, wait, wait. That's pretty brave. We'll give you a 10 CD album of skill after skill after skill. All 10 CDs, one minute presentation, stuff like that. Let's give her a huge hand. Excellent. All right, come on. Yeah, go ahead. Come on up here. How many people here can sell R Square just with 13 words? I just curious, would you like to make the hair grow? <laughs> it would be okay if I can show you how you make zanka and ionize or wrinkle. Right. Let's give her a huge hand. Excellent. Yes. All right, we're going to give you uh, stories to help your prospects believe, how to use stories to sell, and a 500-page manual on how to find new people. Let's give her a huge hand for volunteering. One more. One more. All right, come on up here. Bon, hein, en français, hein, pour nous. Hein? Alors, je suis juste curieuse de savoir si tu as envie de travailler comme ça toute ta vie. Je viens juste de découvrir un moyen de, un moyen de gagner tout l'argent que tu vas gagner dans le, la vie courante. Est-ce que ce serait OK pour toi de venir voir? Yes! Merci beaucoup. We're going to give you a super... This is a 1,800-page encyclopedia of magic words to say and a computer program that creates magic words for first sentences. Let's give her a huge hand. Excellent! Oh, 
Oh, en anglais? Ah. Oh. Yeah, this is interesting. I get invited to Perth, right? I get invited to Brisbane this week and Sydney, but never to Haiti. So, uh, how many people here think that you can wow people right now with just 13 little baby step primitive starter words and make your downline think you are the leader of all times? Now, these only work if you use them. But you'll be amazed that you can create rapport break the ice, and close your prospect before you do the information dump. Now, when you do the information dump, if they're already closed, they're looking for reasons why this is gonna work for them, and it's gonna be so much better than that sales thing going on. How many people here think learning the skills just might be worthwhile? All right, I'll tell you a couple ways to learn them. You can do trial and error. All right, you can get your sponsor to learn for you. And if you'd like to learn from me, there's a little sheet of paper. Did you all get that? If you'd like to learn from me, you can get the giant, well, there's a giant stack of CDs you can get for, I don't know, what, $2.97. But can I make a recommendation? Uh, we put them all in MP3 format on one of these, where you can save yourself a whole bunch of money for 100 bucks. You can actually learn the skills to teach your downline. If you'd like to pick up one of those when you leave here for lunch, pick up one right away. But for $100, uh, how many are squares could you buy for 100 bucks? One, all right, so roughly for the price of an R square, you can learn how to make your business work. How cool would that be? So if you wanna learn the skills so you can teach them exactly word for word what to say, how cool would that be? Now, did everybody here have a pretty good convention so far? Yeah. All right. So maybe you could be saying things when you get home like, uh, I'm just curious, would you like to make more money in our business. I just found out that the best way to do it is to come to the convention. So would it be okay if you pre-registered for the next convention? You could do that, couldn't you? Or you could say, I'm just curious, would you like to double and triple your income right away? Well, I just found out by ordering a whole bunch of R square, you could do that. So would it be okay if we got your order in right away? You could use this anywhere in life. Use your imagination because if you can manage the proper words in the beginning, the first few seconds when the decision by humans are made, do you think you can make a lot of money? So here's my advice. Use the words. And you'll be amazed at how everything changes when you do your presentation. Everybody right away from the moment you move your lips is on your side of the table, leaning forward, taking action to buy from you, to join your business, to move up to leadership because you chose the right words. So I appreciate you inviting me to speak here in the Gold Coast. Tahiti, Tahiti, all right. And that, uh, so on the way out, if you'd like to learn the skills from me, pick up this and you're gonna have a whole bunch for the prize fund R square to learn cool things to say. So I'm just curious how many people are starting to get hungry? I just found out lunch is coming up very shortly, so would it be okay if we bring up the next speaker so that we can move on to lunch? So let's give him a huge hand. Come on up here.